What most people don't know is that Yellowstone is also the home of a super volcano. A volcano that can eject more than a trillion tons of material and can cover an entire continent with ash. Super volcano magma bubbles close to the surface, but a large mass of rock prevents it from breaking free. This happens over hundreds of thousands of years until finally it blasts its way out. Scientists have estimated that the Yellowstone supervolcano explodes once every 600,000 years. We are overdue. It last exploded more than 630,000 years ago. This supervolcano's hot spot extends miles below the surface, nearly halfway to the center of the Earth. The hot spot is the fuel that heats the park's famed geysers, hot springs, and the supervolcano. Scientists search for answers. They research ways to relieve the supervolcano's pressure without triggering a catastrophic eruption. It's a race against time that may soon expire. Yellowstone in northwest Wyoming, land of geysers, mountains, and lakes, is also sitting atop a supervolcano. And it just took what scientists describe as a deep breath, causing miles of ground to rise dramatically. So what does this mean? Well, joining us right now is Michio Kaku. He is a physics professor at the City University of New York and the author of the upcoming book, Physics of the Future. Thanks so much for joining us. Glad to be on. So um, the last time this happened was 640,000 years ago. We're due? We are due. Forget Yogi Bear. Okay, forget Old Faithful. It's on sitting on top of a sleeping giant. Now, if you're sleeping next to an 800-pound eight, gorilla, you monitor every burp every snore of this gigantic gorilla because when it blows it could destroy the united states as we know it this is a, a pretty scary prospect i want to just show people what we're talking about here when we talk about this super volcano and we have a little uh thing to show you a map with some of the details so that's where it is it's um under, beneath yellowstone it's been there as we know i guess this has erupted three times in 2.1 million years uh but what they're worried about is the fact that they say that the ground has started to swell in levels that they have not seen before 10 inches in some places in the past year what does that tell us it tells us that there is activity in the supervolcano which erupts roughly every 600 million years. And the last eruption was 640 million years ago. Oh, 640 million or thousand? A, a thousand years okay, ago, okay. I'm sorry. Because right. then we had some more time. <laughs> then we have some more time, right. But that's what's making us very nervous because the cycle time corresponds to the present day era. So every single burp, murmur of this gigantic potential supervolcano, including the rise of the sea level, has to be watched very carefully. All right, so when we talk about this, and we have pictures, uh, we have, uh, pictures of Mount St. Helen erupting back in 1980. Let's just show this right now. You say that an explosion with this supervolcano under Yellowstone, and there we're seeing the Mount St. Helens, would be a thousand times bigger than this. What type of damage are we talking about here? We're talking about immediate damage out to 100 miles from the site that is total devastation, basically wiping out everything in sight. However, the real damage goes out to 500 miles, if you include volcanic ash, poisonous gases, death of wildlife and vegetation, and that's a ring about 1,000 miles across. That's yeah, the heart line of America. Uh, it, it would pretty much wipe out Earth as we know it? It would wipe out the United States as we know it. And again, we don't want to panic anybody. It could happen tomorrow or it could happen 100,000 years from now. It's black magic trying to predict exactly when it's going to blow. But we do know one thing. One day, it will blow. So, and you say that something on this scale is what wiped out the dinosaurs. 65 million years ago, another supervolcano coincided with this meteor that hit Mexico. And we think it was a double whammy that knocked out the dinosaurs. So it's something that we take very seriously, but again, the cycle time is measured on the scale of hundreds of thousands of years. Would there be anything we could do to prepare or to get people out? I mean, how much of a warning might we get with this eruption? All you can do is run. You don't get much warning. What happens is the, the ground starts to rise, more and more earthquakes take place, more ash and volcanic gases start to be unleashed. That's about the only warning we get, because we do not have a good way to predict volcanic eruptions. Are we getting a better way to do it, or are we just at the mercy of Mother Nature? We're still clueless. Uh, we're still monitoring it very carefully, looking for the warning signs. That's why this sudden rise in the earth, even though it's not immediately dangerous, is being looked at very carefully. 
because we have no experience with supervolcanoes. We've seen Mount St. Helens, we've seen uh, Krakatoa, but a supervolcano erupting in our lifetime, we have no understanding of the scope of that thing. We just see the evidence of previous eruptions. It's amazing. So you say it could be tomorrow, it could be in 100,000 years, but it's under there. <laughs> it's there, and it will happen. At one point, it will destroy North America as we know it. Yellowstone National Park is one of the most studied plots of ground in the world, and it's not just for its amazing beauty, but for the beast below. The beast below, yeah. The park sits atop one of the world's biggest active volcanoes, one capable of laying waste to much of North America, frankly. ABC4's Ben Hunsaker has been talking with scientists who are keeping an eye on the Yellowstone supervolcano. Using a network of GPS and seismic sensors, scientists keep the pulse of Yellowstone. And what they see is a volcanic beast that is still very much alive. We monitor it in real time. That's what you're seeing right there is a seismic station from Yellowstone. There's the Yellowstone magma chamber. Up. Geophysicist Robert Smith has made a career out of studying Yellowstone. He monitors a park in constant motion. Now visitors can't see it, but the ground here is moving up and down as magma pushes against the thin crust and powers the many geysers. Why are all the hydrothermal features here, the geysers, the mud pots, the steam vents, the hot springs? It's because of the heat beneath our feet. Henry Hessler is the park geologist. He says the movement creates constant changes in the Norris Geyser Basin. Daily. Uh, sometimes it's hard to keep up. And beginning in 2004, volcanic pressure caused an amazing rise, three inches a year for five years. That's a lot of uplift, and it's over an area. I'll show you a picture. It's over an area of the entire Yellowstone caldera. It's 50 miles long of uplift. If you went under a rubber sheet and pushed up with your thumb, it's not just sticking up where your thumb is. There's a, like a slope to it. Okay. As the surface has bulged, Yellowstone Lake is actually tilted to the point that some trees to the south of here flooded. Now the ground is sinking. But then why hasn't the trees emerged again? We don't know. For that matter, no one can say how the volcanic pressure is now being released. Geologists are watching for clues from a supervolcano that's millions of years old and still going strong. So, just how big is it? What would a super eruption look like? And how would we know if it's ready to blow? Greetings, YouTubers. Claire here. I guess it's been a while since I did a super volcano video, so it's high time we did another. Today, we're going to go halfway around the world from where I live to the North Island of New Zealand, where over the last couple of million years, there has been one of the most active volcanic zones in the entire planet. Not only is this one of the most active volcanic zones in the world, but it has some of the most wondrous hydrothermal features, features that easily rival those of Yellowstone. I've sometimes seen the statement in print, and sometimes in documentaries, that Yellowstone or Lake Toba was the most recent supervolcanic eruption on Earth. That's simply not true. Lake Taupo in New Zealand is the most recent supervolcanic eruption. It erupted uh, over a thousand cubic kilometers of ash about 26,000 years ago. As with the Toba caldera in Indonesia, the Taupo caldera is occupied by an enormous lake, and the lake lies at the heart of the North Island. It's impossible to consider the Lake Taupo super volcanic eruption in isolation. The system is very active and there have been many eruptions, including many caldera forming eruptions. So we're going to look at the entire volcanic uh, complex of the North Island, including such active systems as Mount Ruapehu. So to begin with, let's take a brief sojourn through geologic history of New Zealand over the last mm, 100 million years or so. For hundreds of millions of years, New Zealand was part of the supercontinent of Gondwanaland. Gondwanaland's major constituents were the continents of South America, Africa, Antarctica, and Australia. About 140 million years ago, the continent began breaking apart, and the microcontinent that included what would become New Zealand began its slow trek to the north. In doing so, the New Zealand microcontinent overrode the oceanic Pacific plate, which was subducted beneath the microcontinent and subjected to melting as it plunged into the mantle. And that's what creates the volcanics of the North Island today. 
You'll note that the situation in the South Island of New Zealand is quite different. Instead of subduction, the plates are grinding past one another in a strike-slip motion, similar to the San Andreas Fault in California. Perhaps you're wondering why the New Zealand microcontinent is overriding the Pacific Plate and not vice versa. It's really a matter of simple physics. The rocks making up the Pacific Basin are far more dense than the rocks making up the New Zealand microcontinent. And so, in a sense, the continental land masses float atop the rocks of the oceanic basins. North Island's volcanic centers form a broad swath beginning with the Tongariro Center, including Mount Ruapehu, and then trending northeast to include the Taupo Caldera and the Rotorua Caldera. It then continues northeast to include White Island. Continuing northeast along the tonga Kermadec Ridge, volcanoes and caldera occur for the next 2,800 kilometers. Unfortunately, these are not within the scope of this video. The oldest of the documented caldera within the North Island Volcanic Centers is the Mangakino Caldera. And it was active apparently from about 1.6 million to about 0.9 million years ago. There were at least five very large eruptions expelling in excess of 500 cubic kilometers of magma each. And um, once you're getting to that size, you're approaching the size of a supervolcanic eruption. Over the past couple of million years, multiple volcanic centers have arisen in the North Island. And... There have been many, many hundreds of volcanic eruptions, probably a few dozen large caldera forming eruptions. Most did not approach the super volcanic category, but were nevertheless very large and, and devastating events. And here are some of the more significant volcanic eruptions. The most recent large eruption of the Taupo caldera itself occurred in 180 of the Common Era. And this eruption is equivalent to the 1815 eruption of Mount Tambora in Indonesia, which caused the infamous year without summer in 1816 in the Northern Hemisphere. It's reported in Roman and Chinese records that uh, at that time there were brilliant red skies in the mornings and evenings. The most recent large eruption in general on the North Island was the Mount Tarawera eruption of 1886. This eruption killed over 100 people and it destroyed one of the most beautiful hydrothermal features in the North Island, the famous pink and white terraces. The terraces were made up of calcium carbonate that had been dissolved at depth by superheated hydrothermal waters and then carried to the surface. As the waters cooled, the calcium carbonate was redeposited in the beautiful pink and white terraces. The pink was the result of a bit of iron contamination. For the last couple of thousand years, the volcanism of the North Island has been dominated by the Tongariro and Ruapehu systems. Here, instead of occasional very large, very violent eruptions, we get much smaller but much more frequent eruptions. Indeed, Ruapehu erupted as recently as last year. Lord of the Rings fans, of course, know Mount Ruapehu as the stand-in in in the Lord of the Rings films for Emin Muil. There you have it, a 10-minute summary on a very complex volcanic system. And while it's true that Ruapehu and its sister volcanoes typify volcanism in New Zealand today, more violent events like the Tarawera eruption can occasionally occur. The remnants of supervolcanic eruptions continue to be discovered. And next time, we're going to be traveling to South America, to the region where the boundaries of Bolivia, Argentina, and Chile intersect, to look at some of the most recently discovered and most mysterious of all supervolcanoes. <music>